It's October, and these are the three baits I think you should be using in the upper, middle, and the south of the great United States of America. I have a goal, and I just have a few more months to achieve that goal. If you can do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, click the subscribe button. I don't know if it's over there or if it's over there, but click that subscribe button and become part of the family. I try to keep up-to-date information, do lure reviews, and I just try to keep it real. Let's start off. Water is finally starting to cool down, and there's places in the middle of the country where they're going to start drawing the water down also. The north up north bass are going to feed because it's going to start getting cold. You're really starting to see some cooler nights. In the middle, you're seeing some cooler nights too, and even down south, but not like up north. They are really getting some cold weather, usually in October. But bass are going to be feeding almost non-stop. They're going to be going into the back of creeks and bends and all those things to find forage fish. Those forage fish are going to be pushed back into the, those areas and they have to make their way out and bass are going to sit there and ambush in them. They're going to attack non-stop. They need to put on fat right now for what's upcoming and as it gets cooler the bass get a little more lethargic. So early morning Reaction baits are what you want to kind of use. As the water warms up because of the weather, put on different baits that will allow you to get those bites. But these three baits should help you catch more fish. So there's a few things we need to just mention just for housekeeping. If you have a topwater fluke bait that is a slow sinker, braid is a lot different than mono. Mono sinks, braid doesn't, mono floats. So that bait's gonna act a lot different than between braid and mono. So know that right off the bat. Next, a lot of times bass are gonna ambush from behind. So there'll be times where they attack that bait and they keep coming towards you. You might not feel the bait or the, feel the bite. What you do need to look at is you need to watch your line. That line will either jump or go slack and that will give you a good uh, time to set the hook. Next in October, bass are going to be moving all over. They're looking to eat as much as possible. One day they might be over here, the next day they might be over there. Keep that in mind. Don't stick to your normal haunts. That might be great yes, today, tomorrow that might be great. Keep an open mind. Keep an open mind on your lures and the lure selection that you're using. Remember what's happening during the day. It's colder at night and then the water's warming up in the middle of the day. Remember those little things. This is a time when I think bass fishing doesn't have as much pressure as a couple months ago. I think as the water and the temperature changes and the, ch it, and the change happens outside from into fall, people are now trying to fish a little bit less because some of them are hunting or they're doing other things. October's a month that when you get on them, you're going to get on them. They're schooled up a lot more. Once you get one bite, cast that same place. You're gonna find yourself with a school of fish in that area. So if you're up north, here's one of the baits I think you should be using. Now normally, this is what I normally use. This is a hyperlastic dart spin from, well, this is a dart prop. I grabbed the wrong bait. This is normally the size I throw. When it is winter time in, in October, I'm now using that little baby one. Yes, that is the size. This is the two and a half inch dart spin. Now, why am I using this? It casts well because it has lead in the, in the, in the front, so it casts a good distance, but that little blade in the back offers a lot of shine and flash that bass are attracted to. So when the bite is tough, this is one of the baits I use. I, I, to be honest, I use this during the summer too, but come October, I think this is a great size bait and the bait you should be using. Next, and one everybody's gonna hear of, is a small square bill crankbait. Now, if you're fishing, if you have deeper water, I think you should use one that has a bigger bill. This is, this is the stuff I use. I think you need to get a little bit deeper right now. And by deeper, I mean, I think you should fish that six to eight foot. Get this to bounce off the bottom too. This isn't a bait where you're throwing and being real methodical and slow. This is a bait that you're throwing right now and you're burning it in. Get it in there. Make those casts, find those fish. This is about the size that they're looking for. They're looking for small shad fish. Now this isn't the right color, but I don't think color matters. The action of the bait matters. Now, the other thing is, hear the, you can hear the rattles in this one. 
I don't think you should be throwing a rattle bait at this time. Rattle is going to dispense a little bit less in cooler water, so they're not hearing as much. So use one that's silent. And then last, up north, I think you should be using a spinner bait. Now it looks like a shad, it acts like a shad, it gives the flat sh uh, that flash, and I think you can't go wrong. I have no clue which one this is, but it was the first one I found and I have way too many spinner baits. That's the one thing I've never done. I've never thrown away or given away a spinner bait, I don't think. It's just, they're always good. Now, if you're in the middle of the country, we're gonna start you off, same bait. It's a squareable crankbait. Get it out there, use it, and burn it in. This is a bait that they're gonna eat constantly. It's the same size, has the right action. If you're just casting it and burning it in, the fish are going to attack it. They're going to eat it. Again, these those are baits that they will attack from behind, and then you might not feel it. So watch your line. That's why I set it in the housekeeping. Next, for me, for everybody really, I'm using a fluke, and this is the only other fluke I will use other than the zoom fluke, and this is the flush from Sixth Sense. I absolutely love this bait. This is a fantastic bait. I think you put a five, uh, five out. EWG hook on this, Daiichi bleeding bait hook, rig it weedless, Texas rig it, however, make that long cast, twitch, twitch, pause, let it sink a little bit, or just let it get a little bit deeper and, and give yourself rod twitches. I think you'll find yourself getting a lot of bites. If you twitch, twitch, and pause and it dives down, you're going to get a lot of bites on that down, on that fall of the bait. So watch your line. And this is where your line mat matters. For me in Florida, I'm using it on, on braid all the time. I want it to stay in that upper water, uh, upper water level. If you're in the middle of the country, I think you should use mono. Use that eight to 10 pound mono. Let it sink a little bit. Let it get a little bit deeper than normal, then twitch it. Then last, I think you should be using a small swim bait. Now these are, these baits, from Marialis are fantastic. The tail kicker is amazing. I use a three-aught bleeding bait hook from Daiichi with these. I make that long cast and I let it get a little bit deep and then I reel it in. It has great tail and wobble to it. And again, it's the right size. It's the right size. That's what we want to key in on. We don't want giant baits right now because they're while they will go after a giant bait, they're not really looking for giant baits. They're looking to feed as much as possible before it gets too cold and they get lethargic. So those are the three baits for the middle of the country. I'm gonna tell you a couple. We're going back to another small swim bait. This is another one I use quite a bit. This one I use a lot. This one is one of my go-to baits. Uh, I like the wobble on it. I put a little bit of weight, weight, weighted hook on it and a screw hook. I don't, I want it to cast a little bit further, but also at the same time, I just want just a little bit of weight to get it in that one to two foot water depth. I don't want it too deep. I want to make that cast and just swim it on the edges of grass or the edges of a pocket or whatever it is. I do know that as the day goes, gets a little bit warmer, fish are going to start getting shallow. For me, I always talk about the frog pond. This is the time of month when the frog at the frog pond, I don't throw a frog. I'm throwing a fluke or I'm throwing a little swim bait. My next bait for down here south is, again, a fluke. This is really the bait I'm using the most in September and October. I'm using more of these than anything as that tail's popping out. I love this bait. I love that Texas rigged and twitching it slowly. I love that. If I feel that I'm not getting the right bites, I do turn to my favorite bait to throw, and everyone would say it was a worm. It isn't Rick from Monster Bass. It's this. I love this bait. This is a band of anglers, minnow shad or shad, whatever it is. This is what I caught that almost four pound or over four pound, um, right at four pound black crappie on, five inch. This is a great bait. I can cast this, burn it in, keep it in the upper water column, or I can twitch it and it suspends perfectly. Also has that little bit of shine on it, as you can see, so I'm getting some shine on it. So the flush and the jerk bait are two of the baits I'm using down south. 
and then I'm also using small swim baits. This might not be considered small, but this is, oops, the upside down. This is the Mega Bass Sleeper Gill. Not giant, not small, but this is another bait that I'm using a lot. I want that smaller bait. I'm not looking for deeper water. I'm looking to stay in that upper water column. I'm gonna fish edges. I'm gonna fish the grass edges. If I know there's a lot of grass out where I'm casting, I'm gonna use that fluke or the flush. Make that cast and let it dive into the weeds. Make it weedless. If, it's, I'm not, if I don't have a bite from there, I'm now gonna to switch to that jerk bait and keep it on the edge of those grass flats or that edge of the bank and twitch it or burn it in. And if I'm not getting a bite from them, then I'm putting on that swim bait, those swim baits. Either that one from Dual Realis or the Pre Cast Prodigy ones. The Dual Realis has a little bit different, smaller tail, so it isn't so, it's a little more subtle. Where the Cast Prodigy has a giant tail and it thumps a lot more. Depending on how the, the water quality is, depends on what one I'm using. If I see the sun is directly overhead, I'm going to use that one that has the smaller tail. If it's getting a little bit low, I'm going to use that cast prodigy. Let them feel that vibration. So there you have it. Those are three baits I think you should be using all over this country. The great America. I'm sweating. It's hot down here. I'm in the house and I didn't turn the air conditioning on yet. Hopefully you like these. Comment below and tell me what three baits you're going to use in your area. Okay? Thanks for watching. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.